Hi, today I thought we'd look at something a little bit different. So I recently had an email from a company called Stone Technology and they manufacture these human machine interface display devices. So these are basically a TFT attached to a driver board that handles all of the technicalities of driving the LCD and presents a simple UR interface for you to interrogate the display, see where people have touched and that kind of thing, or to fire data to it to get it to display on the physical display. Now, I think I did use something quite similar to this quite a long time ago from a company called 4D Systems, and they were quite expensive devices. I think a 4.3 inch display, which is about that big, was, I think it cost me about £100 or something, and it wasn't that great. And I had to play with it and then never really used it in a project because I couldn't quite get it to do what I wanted to do. This example that they've sent to me is a 7 inch display, 800 pixels by 480. And on their AliExpress store, they're selling this for about $93. But they have got a whole range of different types of displays, all the way from 3.5 inch to 15.1 inch. So a wide range of different displays with varying characteristics, so different brightnesses. Some of them are designed for harsher use. Um, they've all got resistive touch screens and uh, they've got various different amounts of memory and that kind of thing, but uh, a whole different range of uses. Primarily, I think, designed for industrial use. So it might be for relatively low volume devices. Definitely got uses in hobby areas, but things where you don't want to physically be spending a whole load of time coming up with some code to drive a TFT, you just want to get some images on there, have some dials and that kind of thing, and then just fire the data to it so that it displays what's going on. So what we've got to do is install the software, and you basically configure everything on the computer, including the communication parameters, and then basically you just have to uh, fire the data to it, and hopefully we can get it to display something on the screen. In the box came a... I think it's some kind of uh, Arduino thing. Uh, they gave an example of driving this um, LED strip with this in line with the display and you can set the colours with that. Um, I'm not going to bother with that today. What I want to do is just try and interface with the GPSDO. So there's this lead here which you can use to power the display. Um, so that plugs into this UART interface and this also presents the UART in the form of a USB to UART converter so that we can test stuff on the computer before we try and interface with the microcontroller. So let's install the software and see if we can get it to display something. Right, so I've downloaded the software. You don't actually have to install it. It just runs locally from the install folder. And here I've created a project for the 800 by 480 display. And I thought we'd just, first of all, just see if we can get it to go through a few different screens. Um, so we need to go into the folder that I've just created and we've got three different images to display and each one has an area where we can click on and that should take us to the next screen and so on just so we can see the touchscreen interaction. So we can use the toolbar to determine what we want to display on the display. First of all we're going to have a look at creating touch buttons. So with this you can create an area of interest where it's going to have an action when you touch that area of the screen. So I've created a block around the next screen area and it brings up the properties for that touch area. And what we want to do is when you press that button, we want it to move on to the next image. And so we can use the page switch here and hopefully we should be able to select it to go onto screen two. Similarly on screen two, we create another touch area here and that has the effect of moving on to page three and another one over the previous screen that's going to go back to page one. And then finally, just on screen three, we just want this to go back to page two. So we use this little board to allow us to easily power the board and that just connects into the connector on the back. And I think it says that this PCB can take anywhere from 6 to 24 volts. So you can use it for your industrial stuff at 24 volts. At the moment, I've just got a 7.5 volt adapter that we're going to plug in. Center positive on here. And we've got something displaying on there. It says, please download the project files first. And that's what we're going to do now. So 
I think we need to use the MIDI USB connector on here. We'll plug that in. And I've just heard it enumerate in Windows. And in the software, I think now we can actually download that onto the board. So download online, I think, is download it over USB. And that will download all of that onto there. And that's it done. So what we should be able to do now is unplug the USB lead and it will boot up with those images. And there we go. So we've got the logo that I had at the bottom, screen one. And if we touch over here, it shouldn't do anything. Then when we touch on next screen, it beeps. I didn't know it beeped. So we might need to see if there's a way to disable that because that's quite annoying already. Um, next screen. And that doesn't seem to work too bad. So we have got it to display something, but what I want to actually display on here is the data from the GPS display and oscillator. So let's see if we can work out how to use some of the other functions to display something that's actually useful. All right, so I've just started mocking up a sample screen to display some of the information from the GPS display and oscillator. And what we can do is we can choose the type of variable or data that we want to show on the screen. So for example, we can display integers or uh, float values, or we can display string variables that come over the UART. We can get that to scroll as well. And there's various other things that we can do. So for example, if we want to display a string variable from the serial port, we can simply drag a box where we want it to display. And then in the property settings, we've got all of the various settings. So first of all, I want to change the font to white. For now, we're just going to use the standard font that comes with the software. You can put custom fonts on here. And then you can give it an initial value if you want it to display something before it's received any serial data. We can put the buffer length. We only need probably, well, 32 characters is rather excessive anyway, but that's enough. And then this is the address that we actually write to when we send data over the UART. So before we program up the screen, what you're supposed to do is configure the UART. So you go to this little section here. And it says here the board rate 115200. And then we've got these two numbers here which indicate the start of a serial frame. So A55A always come at the start of the serial frame to indicate that is a new frame. You can choose something different if you need to. Uh, we'll just stick with the default for now. And then if we have a look in the user manual, we want to write to the variable memory because that's where all of the variables are stored on screen. If we go back to the actual screen configuration, you can see here for variable zero, our address is 0207. The next one down is 0286. And then here, this is what we need to actually do to write to it. So here we've got the A55A as we had before. Then you have a byte which indicates the number of bytes that you're going to send after this point. To send data to the screen, we're using the 0x82, which is what's written here. Then we've got our address. They've got 0003. We want to write to 0207. And then our data all comes after that. So using this serial terminal, we can actually send hex bytes directly. So that's quite nice and easy. You can just put the data that you want to send in there. So A55A, we're sending 12 hex bytes of data. We're writing, so we're using uh, 82 to write to the variable memory. Our address on the screen is 0207. And then these are all ASCII characters after that. So hopefully uh, we've got this connected up using the little uh, USB to UART converter, uh, the one with the power already on it as well. So we're using this little uh, board that came with it. And what we're going to do is just click send on the serial terminal and hopefully we should get something on the screen. And there we go. So it's displayed uh, hex 30, the ASCII character 0, all the way up to uh, 44, which is the letter D. So here's our updated code for the GPS display and oscillator board. And this is just a little bit messy, but we're just testing out the functionality really. So we're formatting a string using the sprint f command. So we've got our a55a, there's a length command, 
the thing to say to write to the variable register and then the address on the display, then we need to work out the length of the string because one of those arguments is the number of bytes that we're going to send. We modify that argument just here and then we send out the entire string using the printf command. And so here we have it running very nicely with the GPS display and oscillator board, which is now running the latest firmware. So we've got really tight precision on some of the timings, uh, but we need to discuss that in another video. In terms of the display itself, you can see that's displaying all of those things really quite nicely. Um, I haven't found what the limitation is for the update rate, but certainly at one update per second, we're not really seeing it taking its time to go through. It seems to be updating pretty quickly. Now, one thing to note is you'll notice I haven't got the same font for the text as on the um, actual background image. Now, it did come with a tool for creating your own fonts from fonts that you've got installed on your PC, but it tried to monospace all of the characters, which obviously makes uh, our European fonts look terrible. But apparently, they're working on an update so that you can use your own fonts and it sort of sorts out the spacing properly, which will be nice because uh, obviously that stands out quite um, a lot compared to what other stuff you might have on the display. Also, in terms of viewing angle, it's not the worst. It's not an IPS screen, so um, you will expect it to drift off quite quickly but it's not too bad overall. It seems to look quite nice and the contrast is also pretty good. It's still got the protective layer on here and we've got a lot of light in the lab and it's still showing up quite clearly. So, you know, in terms of those kind of things, it's working quite nicely and we saw the colours earlier when I had the STG Electronics logo at the bottom. Uh, the colours all looked fine as well. On the back, there's a little solder joint here which I've removed that enables or disables um, traditional RS-232 levels. So with the solder bridge there, then it will communicate directly with a RS-232 serial port. If you remove it, then it works with 3.3 volt log logic. So that's why I've got it removed, so it works with the GPS disciplined oscillator board. We've also got some other features. So there's an RTC on the board, hence why we've got the place for a battery, so it can keep time. There's also an interface, which I think is this header here, for a traditional keyboard, so you can interface with the board with a proper mechanical keyboard instead of the touchscreen. And um, I did find a way to turn off the buzzer. There's an option in the software, but it seems to work quite nicely. Um, and it also has some other functions, which I'm not going to look at today, but you can play videos, playback audio, and um, a few other things like that. And you can do real-time graphing as well. But uh, I'd like to thank Stone for sending these for me. I'll put a link to it in the description down below. If you want to take a look at it, they have got an AliExpress shop. And it might just help if you're uh, just trying to make a user interface nice and quickly with a proper graphic display and don't want to get involved with trying to get all of this working on your microcontroller. So if you've got any comments or thoughts, leave them down below. Any suggestions also include those there. But until next time, thanks for watching.